wouldn't it be nice if we could just, you know, copy and paste something we made in real life? I've always dreamed of that ability. So when Riverpoint reached me and offered a Metro X 3D scanner, I immediately began thinking about how real that possibility could be. And the answer to that is, yeah, but it depends. Stick to the very end of the video and you know what I mean and hear my thoughts on this very intriguing tool. Welcome to Cut Transform Glue. For the sake of transparency, let me just say that Rivopoint sent me the tool for free, but I'm not being paid to speak well of it. And my honest initial reaction, I was impressed, but also a bit cautious. It's one of those tools that immediately makes you think about what's possible, while also reminding you that there's a steep learning curve ahead. And you know, when you feel overwhelmed by a piece of technology, the best thing to do is to jump straight into action. There's no reason to overthink it. Just read the manual, be careful with the thing, and put it to use, whether it's a new tool or a new piece of software. The worst that can happen is to things just not work. And of course, it totally worked. My first scan was a success, and by the end of the process, I had a decent SEL file ready to be sliced and printed. But I knew I had barely scratched the surface, because the idea is to use it to build cool robots. So next, I'll show you how this thing can actually open new horizons for the channel. Okay, so we know this thing is great for digitizing small organic shaped objects, which are hard to 3D model. And just to have some fun, I grabbed this, which is a clay sculpture from early in my career, meaning I was about 8 or 9 years old. And I gotta say, the result was pretty good. I'm sure I'll be able to achieve finer detail and capture more texture in the future, but for the first couple of tests, I was pretty happy about it. Okay, but what about the cool robots thing, CDG? Well, the second hypothesis I decided to test was all about that. So let's say I've got a really good looking part that I wanted to include in a project, but I only have a single one, like this piece right here. Well, in that case, this scanner could be used to digitize it and then print copies of it, especially when we're talking about complex shapes with multiple fillets and curves in weird places. This piece could be very useful if I had two or four of them, so it became my first victim. And if this was a success, it could open up a lot of opportunities for future projects. But as you can see, it was missing the middle part, since it was in a different color. So I took a step back, gave the whole thing a coat of matte white paint, which I assumed was the best for the scanner, propped it up in an elevated platform and went for it again, and this time it was the success. The pieces were nearly identical, and keep in mind that this is just a rough print with some tall layer lines, but yeah, this could definitely be combined into a project and no one would notice. Okay, so far so good, this tool proves itself to be very useful for the channel, but you guys are probably screaming at the screen right now, what about scanning your past projects? Well, this is where things get complicated, but still promising. Let me explain. Nothing excites me more than the idea of digitizing these creations and, let's say, make a short animation with them. I think about this every time. But as you notice from the previous tests, the scanner needs a specific color array, meaning mostly black or white to work, as far as I understand. So because of that, when I tried making a 3D model of the power drill from the Reaper robot project, it missed a few parts, and the overall resolution wasn't as good as before. Mm -hmm. 
But then I started thinking, if I have a 3D model of the part, even if it's missing a few bits, could I use that as a guide to remake the whole thing? And that's exactly what I did. The software I'm using, by the way, is called Plasticity, in case you want to know. But yeah, using the SDL that the Revo Point software put out as a guide, I was able to, without even touching the caliper once, make a very precise copy of the model. This really goes to show that not a single tool or a single piece of software is the perfect solution. Each part of the process is a different challenge and for each one, different tools and skills are necessary. For future projects, I'll be able to scan them and have a digital version before the painting process, probably right after the final coat of primer. But even for already painted models, there's a workaround. Okay, so now let's use this great tool to achieve something interesting, like a backup power drill for my repair robot, shall we? And while we're at it, let's make it slightly different than the first version, because there's no point in making the same exact design, we're always looking forward in this channel. One of the changes is actually the chunk of the drill. The original version was too bulky, so I replaced it with some resin printed gribbles from my collection. And I'm also replacing the drill itself for this plastic one, which is slightly thicker and more good looking. I also replaced the part in the back where the wires would be connected for a simpler solution. Then I primed the pieces and was ready for the painting process, which I'll show you in great detail this time. This time I wanted to go with a metallic paint for the chuck, so it looks more like the real thing. So I started with a coat of glossy black. And did the same thing on the drill bit, which is actually a masonry bit, so yeah, this is why it looks kind of weird with that tip right there. And after the black comes the metallic paint. Don't ask me why, but it makes the whole thing much shinier when you start with a dark base first. Then I masked the front and the back of the drill and painted the middle of the body, first going with a coat of white to act as a base. And on top of that the color of choice, this lime green, which at this point you guys already know is one of my favorite colors. Of course, some leaks. This brand of masking tape is super delicate and had some trouble adhering to the metallic coat. No problems at all, cause I'll hide my crimes with a wash. But before the wash, I went for a chipping session. The chipping I do is just exposing, in this case, the primer base using a sharp tool, and has become one of my favorite parts of the painting process, it's when I have fun and create some extra panel lines. Right after that came the wash session, where I'll make these two look dirty and used. And this process is also fun and simple. I just apply some super thin down acrylic paint into the cracks, then I clean it off, repeating the process however many times I feel like it. Then came a coat of matte varnish, which really brings everything together. But don't go anywhere yet, cause there's a neat trick coming next. Which is using a pencil to bring some of the shininess back to the metallic paint. I use it mostly on the corners and the result is pretty subtle, but it is there. And this pretty much completes the cloning of the power drill, a neat piece from a dear project of mine.
If turning real objects into 3D models is your thing or your job, this tool is a must have. For me, I always like to test new tools and ideas and my projects live right in between the line of found objects and what I create digitally, this thing will definitely open new horizons for the channel. Thank you so much to Riverpoint for sending me this amazing piece of tech and let me know which project you'd like to see recreated in 3D down below. And as always, thanks for watching.